Trappy Don. Documentary. It's all here. This was before rap. Yo, my name is Travi Don. Come from Redding, PA. Born in Brooklyn, New York. I'm a rapper. You know, I represent the struggle, the streets, the family. You know? Started rapping because my niggas like me. And then I began to love it. My name is Mel, you already know everybody know me as Capo. I'm from the north side, six would be exact. You know what I'm saying? We doing this shit for Travis Dawn. You know, that's my bro, you know what I mean? We grew up together. I came out here from New York when I was 16. You know what I'm saying? So when I came out here, I was fucking with some niggas. My R.I.P. my man Jamal. While I was fucking with them, I ended up meeting Trav. Cause he used to come through the block when he was at. And he was already cool with them already. You know what I'm saying? So once he was around them, me and him got cool, you know what I'm saying? And from then, it was yard out, you know what I'm saying? We started doing, we started getting money together. I mean, people might not like this, but we fucked a lot of bitches together, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, it is what it is. You know, as far as the shit he talk about, niggas really lived it. As far as him getting money, we been getting money. From 03 to now, you know what I'm saying? I've been in five years to do this here. Stand on stage, I had dreams while in there. Locked in the cage with wild niggas, trapped in the chains. Lives in flames, my heart rage, trapped with pain. Everybody got their own story. A lot of people don't got this talent. So I tell everybody's story that I'm familiar I with. I watched him like grow up, you know what I mean, six four, that's where we all come from. So, you know what I mean, he always held it down. Bobby's front chiller, like <laughs> hooping at the high and shit. Like, he always maintained a level head and just held stuff down. You know. Um watched him grow into a nice Chris young man, like doing his thing on the rap scene. Uh, he had the cookout. Well, I have a cookout every summer for the kids. So he, you know what I mean, hollered at me. He wanted to do the, the uh, Jamal song uh, video shoot down there. So we just had a good day in the park. Brought back that old 90s feel. And, you know what I mean, put on for the town. Uh, we, we rap. It's kind of different, you know what I mean? Everybody can't rap the way we rap sometimes, you know? Like, it's just deep in the rap. And, you know, where we come from, everybody don't make it out. The streets mean I'm the only one in the city like it. Talking shit as real niggas wanna hear. All my niggas gotta do my shots here. Till I see you when you stuck out like a motherfucker. But you got to change, get no finger to the fuckers who ain't out so on the train. I'ma do my thing. I've been through a lot like everybody else. But uh it ain't no different, but yet it's still unique. I'm about to take this shit to another level. Cause I represent more than just me. I represent a lot of people. First met Trav, yo, in like 89. You know what I'm saying? First moved from New York. Man, he had a little 
triple fat goose and giant jacket, all that shit. Shaking hands and shit. Every day we just took off from there, you know what I'm saying? That's my bro for real. I love niggas like that. Like, I'm talking about Lawrence Park, kindergarten, fifth grade, Northwest, Brandon High, we play on basketball, all that, you know what I'm saying? Like, this shit right here is real. Like, he's a real nigga, you know, for real. I love him like, I love him like my own brother. From his grandma, you know what I mean? Miss Tammy, Charles, Jeremy, like, we did it all. I was just gonna, like, just to start it. Like, he's just a real nigga, you know, for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes, you know what I'm saying? I give him a phone call, here and there, I need your advice. And then we start putting them lines together, spitting on the street, like, the shit he be spitting is a real shit, like, like, we, it's crazy how it, how it is, like, bro. Like, we come from playing basketball, growing up, and then, and then as soon as we turn 17, 18, we can't go to school, this and that, and we in the streets, like, you know what I'm saying? We got dining together, and we all still talk, like, you know what I'm saying? And I love him for that. You know, I'm respected, but I'm humble, too. But I love this shit. I live for it. A lot of times I wanted to quit, but you know, just something just ain't let me. We was living it and we upheld it when heat came down on us. When niggas was going to jail, niggas was going to the feds, we held it down. Ain't not one nigga on our squad told. You know what I'm saying? Not one nigga that fucked with us told. We was the niggas holding, and I ain't, I mean, at the end of the day, I ain't popping shots at niggas, but we held it down for the North Side. Just like everybody else, I did time, but I stood tall, stuck to the script, followed the code of the street, had my back to the wall, knuckles was ashy, you know what I'm saying? Pockets was empty, and I got back. So I got tough skin. You know what I'm saying? It don't make me no different than anybody else, but I ain't the same either. And people respect that. And that's when you know it's real. Try to be done. Documentary. It's all here. This was before rap. My influences in music and rap coming up as a child. I listened to a lot. I grew up on Jay Z, Biggie, all the New York rappers, East Coast rap. Um, but before then, like even when I was younger, I just remember like my uncle playing a bunch of music, you know, slick rip, artist storytelling, a lot of stuff like that. I like I like a lot of storytelling rappers. So that's where my influence come from. I'm kind of like used to that that New York feel. So, a lot of rappers that I listened to when I was young, nine times out of ten was like from New York, as far as like Jay-Z, B, you know, stuff like that. I wasn't really like an Eric B. Rock him back that far. I was only born in 84, so growing up, Biggie, Jay-Z was kind of like my era when I started to understand what they were saying, you know, understand what rap was. First time I picked up a pen was like 98. Those probably was like my first couple was my first rap in the ninth grade. Um, <clears throat> it was mainly me and then like a couple of other, my homies caught on to it. We used to you know, lunchtime go to the table, spit out bars, things like that. But we used to just do it for fun. You know what I'm saying? Uh, That's gonna be the best time to I I used it as an escape because as I got older and started going through things, you know. High school years was more so like the years where I made that transition to adulthood and started doing a lot of you know, other things. So I had a lot more to, to write about. But <clears throat> ninth grade was when I, when I picked up the pen and I started taking it serious, maybe like, you know, towards the end of 12th grade. Skyline, man. Y'all already snow gang, man. Shout out to my boy Cherry the Dime, man. You know, I'm ready when he came home from the feds. You know, I'm out here jigging and shaking. Uh, I ain't feel like it was no run for two big black motherfuckers. But, you know, that's my fucking guy, man. You know, man. He ain't think he say he is, man. In my book, man, I fuck with him, man. Me authentic, man. 
A hundred, man. I ain't never get nothing less from me, man, you know? So, you know, saluting. Doing his fucking thing. You know, I stand behind him on anything he do. When we keep it a hundred with me, I keep it a hundred with you, you heard me? And you gotta respect him, man. Y'all ain't making moves, man. So y'all already snow gang, man. Royalty too. <laughs> Try. And I started hanging with some niggas that was doing music for real. They was a little older than me. And they kind of like, you know, made me step my game up a little bit. That's when I started running with these crew, no fear group, no fear music group. It's my man Ernie, Ace, you know what I'm saying, T Mac. I, I'm more so known for being, <clears throat> being with them. And that's when shit started getting serious, you know. We started, we started putting it down in the city and getting recognized. Surrounding towns, you know, started doing shows at different venues and stuff, and they seen the potential that I had in me, and you know, they put all their energy into pushing me. But at that point in time, I was so deep in the street, like I ain't really, you know, I wasn't really into it like I was supposed to be. So I kind of like half-assed but you know, when it was time to get busy, I was dead. A lot of people said I wasn't shit. A lot of people said I ain't gonna be shit now. Some people say I'm better than what I ever was. I don't believe in luck at all. I believe in being prepared. I stay prepared for anything. When you touch down, you gon' get everything. Feeling like I owe my niggas everything. Cause they ain't leave on me when that metal claim. When it was the cane, I was measuring. I took an old boy, I would never sing. It all started on the north side, though. Front Street, right now, corner store. That's where, that's where it got busy at. Pack boy. I was making 40 off 100. Wow, that's pennies. That shit was like, a, that shit was like a thousand dollars to a young kid, man. You know? I live life fast though. I grew up real quick. All my friends and all my niggas was older than me. That nigga a motherfucker star. They ain't even my video. It's his video. He like, who that nigga that <laughs> like, put the I was basketball? Always, I, always, I was always the, not the smartest, but I was always like, like what everybody looked at. You know, they knew something, with, something. They they saw something in me. You know what I mean? I was gonna be something. I was gonna turn up and something. I ain't gonna like some speed. What up, Trey? Something. Had to. It's not like you know, struggling. <laughs> All I, all I knew, like, I was a smart kid. I'm still a smart kid. It's just that you know, growing up in an environment that I was like, you know, I was, a, I changed. I was a little different. Like my, my way of thinking was different and stuff like that. But eventually, like, I came around. You know, I got into the swing of things, but it wasn't a smooth transition. I had like, I had like. A lot of down periods. I stayed away, you know, like I was in the mountains a lot. You know, uh, when I first came home, I stayed with my dad, so he didn't live in the city. He was in the, he was in the mountains, so I got a lot, a lot of time to think and get myself together before I let anybody actually like see me. You know, I had to let it, I had to let it soak in. So, but it didn't take long. Before you know it, it was like, you know, it was history. Like, I didn't even really think about it too much. Front Street taught me a lot. They say the school of hard knocks, if they ask me what the school of hard knocks is, Gotta say front now. You know, 
but that was more like gladiator school. You know, you gotta fend for yourself. You know what I'm saying? You gotta prove yourself every second. Watch over your shoulder every second. August 2009. Uh, it was like a six man indictment. Some bullshit though. You know. Uh, long story short, I wound up doing. Got sentenced to five years. All in between that time, I've been through like everything. You know, that was my first time actually getting locked up, going to jail, doing time. And it was federal time, so, like, if you know, like, if you've been in jail before, you know, like, the federal system and the state system is completely different. <clears throat> as far as, like, details and your sentencing and how you do your time as well. Like, a lot of people say that federal time is easier. I mean, that shit the same. Especially, like, when it fucks up, fucks with your mental. Like, if you ain't strong-minded, if you don't got that thick skin... You ain't gonna be able to get through that shit. I don't care how much time you do. You could do 24 months. You could do 60 months. 28 years. You know what I'm saying? Everybody doing the same time when they in there. <clears throat> Me? I just try to, like, stay active. That's what got me through it. Like, I, uh... I played basketball, so... In the fed system, basketball was a big thing. Like, they already know about you before you even get to the compound. That was kind of shocking to me, too. Like, so as soon as I touched down, they already knew what they was doing with me. Like, oh, we're going to try and recruit him to play ball, or he he's a good cook, or, you know, like, he told or he didn't tell. He's a stand-up guy. So they already know about your history. They already know about you. I'm talking, like, the inmates, the people that's already doing time. They already know. So basically... Whatever kind of man you was before you actually get to this compound determines how your time is going to go. Me, I was just lucky enough to be a real guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't the hardest. You know, like, I wasn't the grimiest. I wasn't the toughest. But I handled my business, did what I had to do. Got in and got out. Um, I just stayed active, though. I did a lot of shit. Like, there's a lot of programs for me. I did culinary arts. You know, I was cooking most of the time. Playing basketball, they got music there. I was doing concerts. You know what I'm saying? I just tried to do everything to make me feel like I wasn't in jail. And I got through it. You know, before you know it, the gate was cracked. You know what I'm saying? Like, but while you're doing it, it's like, while I was doing it, it felt like a long time. But the moment I left, it was like, damn, that shit was quick. They ain't really have shit for us like that. We ain't have opportunities to... To, 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 to be good, be successful like everybody else, you know. Like this ain't the suburban area. This is the hood, the mud. A lot of niggas, man. A lot of niggas like me out here. A lot of good niggas. A lot of bad niggas. A lot of grimy niggas. You know. You felt personal about them. You had to show it. Can't keep nothing a secret around here. Nothing to seek around here anyway. Land too small. Yeah, streets raised me. What's up, baby? You good? Right with my mama. Listen, we in the building. And my mama. Yeah, we go from Chelsea street. to um, Delano. That's 142nd. They call it now the New Savoy. You heard? We from Jerome Ave. We from Yonkers. Warburg Ave. You know it. Yo, JD Kiss. You heard? You know it. 190. 64, remember 64? Yeah. The cab, nigga. Yeah. You heard Harlem Cab it. Service, nigga. Yeah. We go way back, nigga. Like, this is what we do out here, you heard me? What? That's memories, nigga. I just put a cloud in your head. Crip heads up, you heard me? You heard me? You know what I'm saying? love, sister mud. I was involved with music for so many years. I met so many talented individuals. Like, like Travi Don is definitely an originator from the city of Reading. True artist, somebody that can paint the picture with words. Storyteller. And the fact that, you know, he tells his story to the realistic point. 
he's able to deliver that and he's growing as an artist as well I, I believe his you know his best work is still to come so Bestowed in me to do certain things, regardless if I had to do it or not. I was good at it. That like a talent, it's like basketball. Good ball player, good student, good hustler. It's only wrong because because the white man said it, it, it's illegal. If it was legal, that would have been a career that I had that I probably would have been very, very successful with. Just like anybody else. Like I always say, like, I ain't no different, man. Like I just felt victim to the, to the society that I live in. Not even victim. I can't even really say I felt victim. I just I embraced it. I embraced it and I loved it. I love where I came from. And I love how I grew up. And I never take that back for anything. It made me why I am today. certain things and I viewed my city was different than how it was before I got locked up and a lot of people changed it was like very few that kind of like stayed the same so there's a lot of people that I had to like distance myself towards but then there's the ones that 
always kept in contact with me too that I never that never switched up or you know kept a genuine love with me so I, I remained to like be friends with them and it be like that though you know what I'm saying it's like that all the time even people who don't get locked up you know it's just all about growth you know when you grow and the next person don't it's like you can't you can't stay stagnant with them like the train don't stop like I always say like the train don't stop that's just merely stating like gotta keep going you can't let nobody hold you back keep you from learning and growing and you know leveling up like everybody like to say you know but I love everybody though so love was always there with me that was something you never had to question even though even even people that I'm not cool with now that I used to be with then like the love never changed it was just like you know niggas gotta do what they gotta do Niggas grow at different paces.